Right back into the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We're in the Pope leg there, uh, but the game is not Animal Farm. It's 7 by 7 ages, as those of you who have been following this are aware. Um, it's been a few days since I've played, so I thought it'd be a good time to kind of remind myself and you uh, what's been going on. So we have, you know, our different empires there. The colors that are similar belong to the same person, so red and pink both belong to Little Red, etc. Uh, I'm not going to go over again how the game's played, actually. A uh, little bit different sort of overview. So what are our big stories? Our big stories are, um, you know, who... The, the, main, the main idea right now is who is going to be eliminated when we get to this space. And overall, it's looking like Flush was the one. You know, Flush is behind everyone else in terms of glory points. Right? He's two behind Cowboy. Um, and he's also in a worse position than everyone else uh, in terms of other game stuff. He only has one empire, whereas everyone else has two or three in the case of Melky. So essentially that means he has two actions uh, a turn while everyone else has three at a point in the game when he is behind. Um, so that's pretty tricky for him. That's kind of our one big story. Our other big story is Melky. Melky is sh way out ahead. So he is like the reverse of Flush here. Um, whereas Flush is stuck on an island, Milky is uh, slowly taking over the seas. So that's kind of the big point-wise uh, stories of the game. Otherwise, um, we have this interesting situation where it was the powerful Roman Empire being trapped in between um, both of Kaz, as in Cat, uh, both of her empires there. So that's kind of an interesting thing. It'd be interesting to see how that develops. Um, what else? We have Giraffe and Little Red both just sucking up points by um, by dominating their, I guess, subcontinents or subregions. Uh, you know, as long as Little Red is the only person in China, he's going to get keep getting points without really having to compete. And likewise for Giraffe there. Um, Little Red is close to having the same sort of situation in Africa as well. Uh, he has the Nubians right here, or Nubite, yeah, Nubians, Nubians, comma, Kushites uh, there. Uh, he has to compete, however, with the powerful uh, Pharaonic Egyptians, which are Runts people. So they're going to be competing over Africa. Um, you know, I think uh, the, the Pharaonic Egyptians overall are better, I think, than the Nubians, but at at the same time, uh, Little Red's in a better geographic location, and he has less other things to think about. Pharaonic Egyptians, that you know, they score points in a number of different ways. You know, they can also score based on artifacts. Whereas the Kushites is pretty much Africa or nothing uh, for them in terms of getting points. So that that should be an interesting development. And then we have you know the general um, the sea area here. We have a number of different empires that score by being. Uh, by owning the sea. Um, Milky right now, he has the big big lead on that because he's the only one who could make boats. Um, we're seeing now though that Cowboy should be able to make boats this turn and then we might see some battles there which might be interesting. Um, yeah, so Cowboy has the lighthouse. I think the lighthouse does help boats in some way uh, and that should be good for him and he might actually have the the counter advantage too. Let's see, he has two twos. Where are his boats? His boats are three ones. And um, yeah, Melky's are two ones. So he's gonna have stronger units, but Melky has the jump on him. So that's that's gonna be interesting to see how that comes along. Um, Flush is still here without any boats. However, that's gonna change soon. And that's, that's one thing I wanted to talk about. So there's a little bit of a silver lining um, to the cloud that is Flush, the, the Flush cloud. Uh, Flush just became the leader in science uh, on this last spin. So if he can maintain that, um, which he will be able to for at least one more turn, um, he'll be able to progress up to this point here where he can finally get boats. And that's going to allow the, I guess, the anti-flood waters to burst and allow the Syracusians out onto the ocean. Now he's going to be coming out into a, in a, into a rather bad situation here, right? Because there's already, there's pirates over here which could be taken over the, the ocean, though I think Cad probably be focused on the area where she doesn't have to compete. Um, but then there's also Milky and Cowboy as we talked about, so that's what's going on over there. And I think that's a pretty good overview of where we're at. Real quick note while I'm thinking about it, about combat, uh, for those of you who've been following this, I don't know 
know why you would jump in at this point, really. If you had have just jumped in at this point, maybe go back and watch the rest if you're interested uh, that come before this. Otherwise, a lot of this isn't going to make sense. And I don't want to spend all my time explaining what's already happened uh, to people who've probably already watched everything up to it. So I think reminders are useful because um, it is a lot of kind of distant information that is maybe difficult to internalize. I know I, I don't remember everything and I can't expect you who are watching at home to remember anything, everything. But anyway, my what I wanted to talk about is combat system. I, I've been wanting to, to get something new for a combat system. I've been playing a game or starting to learn to play a game because I'm going to be playing it tonight with some people um, that uses a combat table. And I think that's probably what I'm going to end up doing is just taking a combat table from another game and using that because I think that'll give me the, the sort of results that I want. Right now, combat is whoever wins, they don't lose anything and the losers lose something. I really like it in combat when the winners and losers both stand to lose. I, I find that refreshing somehow. So what, the reason why I'm saying this is if you have a, a game in mind that has a particularly good combat table that you think would fit for this, feel free to suggest it to me. Otherwise I might just go with, um, I'll see how the game goes tonight. Uh, if that works, I might just go with that combat table. And the boat race has commenced. And by boat race, I mean kind of like an arms race, only it has boats. Uh, Cowboy got two boats this turn, and uh, Milky got one. Cowboys are stronger. Uh, Milky still has more boats, but Cowboy has stronger boats. Cowboy's boats are in port, however. Milky's are at sea. And Little Red made a bit of a blunder. He decided to spread his forces out rather than protect his homeland. So Beowulf leading um, the forces of Runt are, are really starting to take him out. Uh, took his homeland already and now she's she can move again because Beowulf is a strategist uh, coming into Ethiopia here. And they're gonna have another fight. I don't think there's really anything he can do. Let's see, two, five, um, against four. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's possible. So let's let's draw. We'll draw a runt first. She's got ten. Yeah, it's not gonna be possible. Oh, it is. It's a tie. So I gotta shuffle and do it again. All right, this battle is going to be for control of Egypt, right? Because they each have. Two now, this will be the third space. If she can take this from Little Red, that's gonna be an extra extra point for the Pharaonic Egyptians and one point off uh, the Kushite Nubians. Um, so how, how I'm tallying the, just so you know how the strength points are tallied, that's one, two, see these upper left-hand corner there, and then plus three, that's five, so they have five. And then this guy has one, but he gets plus three because he's defending the mountain, so four. All right, we'll draw runs first. Okay, I think he's probably, yep. Okay, she got him beat. And the, the Nubians spread out too quickly, which is kind of what Little Red likes to do. And he didn't, I don't think he really counted on Beowulf's uh, strategizing. He was thinking Beowulf would go here, but Beowulf wouldn't do so well against the, the Sphinx, and Runt has learned that she does not want to lose another leader. So check out all these cards Flush has. You would think he would have got another empire he could start, or you might think that, but you would be wrong. And uh, instead he has quite a few things he can do this this uh, civilized action to other people. People have started throwing um, bad effects on each other this turn. Um, I think some artifacts were created both here and here, I want to say. No, here. Um, but Little Red got rid of them both, um, drafted some effect that got rid of Kaz, uh, Gaul's treasury there, She, you know, which makes sense. She's in between the Gauls and the, the pirates to make them poor. Um, so now Flesh is going to have uh, a little bit of fun with his, his spiritual advantage over everyone except for Milky. So he can pretty much damage anyone unless they have a, a reversal card on them. Before I go through... Um, Flush's uh, godly wrath. Uh, I wanted to go over some of the, the interesting leaders that came up this this civilized round. He's going to be the end of the civilized round. Uh, reason being, some of them are pretty appropriate, and they were random draws, I assure you. First was Kiri Silvertip, it ended up being uh, Aristotle. So she's a, a, a winged 
winged person, which is kind of Greek mythy, even though I don't think there were winged warrior maidens in Greece. I think that was a Norse thing with the Valkyries, but I thought it was kind of appropriate. You can, you can picture a woman with wings uh, in the mountains of Greece during mythic times, and there she is. Um, I'm afraid something bad might happen to her, though, so that's why. I'm worried. Um, so then we also have Spartacus. Spartacus got drawn for the Romans. He's not a particularly named person. Uh, he is an explorer, this fellow here. Um, and I thought that was very fitting that he would end up in Rome. Anyone else? Oh, we got Prince Wallard Blatt showed up. He's a t he's not very powerful character, but he can't really be killed. He just keeps respawning in this one space where he he first started every time he dies. And that's going to be really good for Little Red because he's a philosopher. Um, this is a case where his his um, Seven Ages ability is really going to be helpful. And then, of course, his um, Duel of Ages ability buttresses that. Since he's a philosopher, uh, Little Red's going to win ties uh, for as long as he's in play, and he's going to be in play longer. I think he can die of old age, though. I'm not going to let him stay the whole game. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to make a call on that. Um, any other new leaders? No, but I think the Syracusans will come up with one. Well, they'll try anyway. Uh, oh, El Cid came. Uh, El Cid was one of the Celts' calls. He's another one that's hard to hard to kill. He lasts a while after he's supposed to die. So um, let's talk about like who Flush is going to do bad things for it to. He has like basically I think three bad cards that are pretty devastating. Uh, two plagues or one's a pestilence, one's a plague, and then some fires. Um, he would really like to do it on Melky for a couple reasons. Um, he'd like to get him in the water here, and you know, Melky's, if the Syracusans do get boats, Melky's going to be his main competitor. Um, he's not able to do that, though, so he's going to be focusing on people who are on the glory track. He doesn't want to take out um, the Phoenicians here because he wants them to compete with um, Melky, so I think he's going to focus on, I think he might try to take a shot at the pirates, because then he's, he can head towards open ocean if they're out of the way, and then also maybe Little Red and Cowboy, some probably the Greeks, and then I guess these guys here if he wants to take down Little Red. Depending on how the cards turn out, it could be that they don't end up hurting one. The idea being if he can make one of these other guys do poorly, maybe he has a better chance of overtaking them. And there's the death toll of the first plague. Wiped out all of the Greeks and almost all of the Celt skulls. There's, there's one space he didn't get to. So how the pestilence works is you draw cards basically and you subtract the age and whatever, whatever, if you have a positive sum left over, you remove that many units. So it started in Greece, went through Thrace, Illyria, and then if you're successful, if you remove any units, you, you go to the next adjacent space um, all the way through here and then ended up at this stack here and wasn't able to take any in from Rome. So that was pretty devastating. Um, I think he's going to leave Cowboy alone for this next one. I don't know that he wants to use a disease up here, though, either. Uh, he might go... Hmm. Maybe he will put a disease on these pirates. And here, Capazoid played a, a blowback card. That makes it so that she gets to decide where it goes. Um, she could have. To, she could decide to do it to Cowboy. However, that's not going to really work. I mean, she'd have to draw one, two, three. Yeah, he's got like he's got enough units. There's no way she could take them all. Um, so, who would she like to get rid of? I guess she would probably like to get rid of these guys here. But then she also has Runt right there. Maybe she well. Her galls aren't going to do much to them. I think she's going to come through on Rome. Hmm. Eh, well, I'll have to think about where, where Cow wants to do it. I think she's going to hit India um, right here. And here we'll see the process. So I turn over a card, and it's already failed because 1 minus 1 is 0. And. Right, and he finished up his destruction by um, setting a fire in Spain that spread into southern France there. So there's these disorder markers there. They, they're they problematic. They're not as bad as the pestilence, obviously. Um, and then he also made an assassination attempt on El Cid, uh, but that was not successful. Cat, as in cat, 
but managed to fend that off. So we saw a lot of destruction there. And that's, for those of you who don't know this game so well, that's, that's the kind of thing you're going to be seeing more often in this game than in the way I've been playing. Um, these, these wreaths kind of def defend against it, and maybe I don't use the, the powers of the cards as much as I would as as w as would happen in a game anyway, dis despite even the the fact that these wreaths are kind of a protective factor, um, but we are seeing them more. All right, and that's going to be the turn. Um, Flush didn't really gain on Cowboy at all. They each got one point. Cowboy lost his Greek, so that that took away some of his scoring potential. But he is gaining on Cat, as in Cat. Cat got no points this turn. The Celt Gauls no longer have their majority. Um, and the pirates still are are not getting any points because they don't have any water or anything like that, and there hasn't been any battles beginning in the the water. Um, oh, that's only conflicts that they win anyway. So, Flush's Flush's maneuvers uh, with his civilized action have have had huge effects actually in terms of the points. Uh, been a big benefit to Little Red actually. Uh, he, because of the lack of the Celts Gauls, his um, his Chow now are one of the majority people in the world, and since they are philosophers, they they win on that tie, and so he got some points off of that. All right, I've gone through and picked for everyone for another round. Um, this this round is going to start with a turn. I don't know if it's a turn or a round. I guess a turn is going to start with Melky this time. Um, and there's just some interesting situations I wanted to comment on before I get started with with playing uh, in terms of uh, people's choices they had to make. First one was Melky's Minoans here. Okay, he would like to keep building ships. However, he can't keep building ships and maneuver. The reason why he needs to maneuver is because he has a pretty fair. Uh, he can make a pretty fair bet that Cowboy is going to be entering the Eastern Mediterranean here with his uh, superior forces. So Melky's only chance is either to vacate the Eastern Mediterranean or put all his forces in there, all his boats in there, uh, to try and defend it. Um, I'm not sure which one he's going to do yet, but either either case he's going to have to maneuver rather than uh, produce, which is unfortunate for his Minoans because they really need to have more ships than cowboys in order to outnumber him. He's going to be losing his advantage pretty soon here, I think. Giraffes, Romans, who are purple here, and Runts, Amazons in the green, they see um, a Europe that's just opened up due to disease. So they're both going to be grabbing for land, I, you can bet. Um, giraffes... Uh, choices are made a little more complicated by Cab being nearby, but Cab's got her disordered areas to deal with, and really she's not going to score on taking land from Giraffe, nor um, is she there to support the Gauls anymore. The Gauls got decimated by that disease, so that kind of affected that whole situation. Um, Little Red, he's an in in interesting, well, he's kind of in some very stagnant trouble. Um, not so much trouble for the Chow, but the Chow are in a, in a, have a problem. Um, the benefit of being the Chow is they're way far away from everyone, so they don't have to compete for their points. The problem with that is since Little Red doesn't have the scientific advantage, uh, he's too far away to, to trade with anyone, so he can't, uh, he can't um, advance at all with the Chow, so they're stuck uh, in the second stage of progress which is not enough, and so he, he can't really get any more units. I guess he could he could buy this one more archer, but he needs to progress before he can get any more. Now, you could just keep them and keep earning points, but eventually another empire is going to come in and clear them out if they don't get stronger, and then those points will no longer be available to him. And plus, he's not really doing anything there. Um, I guess he could maneuver his Waller Blatt around, or, you know, he could do some things, but it's not a very um, maximized potential. Uh, the... The Nubians, they are in um, some trouble too. They are in the desert. They could, their their forces are pretty well wiped out. There's only two of them. The desert, they could get two dollars. So every time he produced with the Nubians, um, he could get one more spearman, and that just seems seems difficult. So he's going to be discarding the Nubians again, or discarding the second empire, which is unfortunate for him. And Flush, this should be his last turn that he is stuck with not really having much to do here. 
in Syracuse. Hopefully next turn he'll get another um, Empire. I decided to put the, the Fallen Empires back in the deck, discard pile, which is actually the rule. I was playing different because I wanted to have this kind of like storing up. Um, it worked well with the Seven Wonders boards, but without having that component there, it no longer feels necessary. Um, plus that, you know, if you lose an Empire, it's really hard to get another one if they don't cycle back through. Um, so I made another call on the rules. It's So one of the reasons he has been trading and progressing, which is one of the actions that lets you go forward, right, on the progress track, is because um, it says you can't trade through C areas until um, area, age four. So this this car or this row here. Um, so there's a boat right next to him in an adjacent space. So that's well within his range. I don't know if that's through a sea area or not. I, I So I'm ruling since it's right next to him and it's a boat. It seems like you should be able to trade with that boat. I don't see why not. Um, I'm not sure if I'm reading the rules right or not. The rules say through. I'm not going to look it up uh, online or try and hunt for that because I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world and it makes sense to me that he should be able to trade with the Minoans so he is going to be able to trade and progress this turn all right so Milky decided to move all his ships into the western Mediterranean uh, reasoning you know if he doesn't deal with cowboy over here his um, homeland which is the island of Crete for his Minoans is going to be in big trouble. Um, Cowboy's response, they both chose maneuver actions, was to not take him head on. Cowboy only had two boats, uh, which are a good deal stronger than Milky's, but it uh, would have been a fairly even fight. Cowboy did a, a breakthrough. He used this breakthrough card to shoot a boat past um, the battleground. He had to leave one behind and take it inland in uh, the northern part of Africa, Carthage here, um, both Paradox and a unit. So he suddenly just uh, has a little colony in Africa. Still have to do the fight, however. Um, so let's take a look at our numbers. I gotta see what his lighthouse does. Cowboy has a lighthouse, which gives him a, a bonus, I think, of one, but I'll double check. All right, yeah, it adds one to everything. I'm showing you this chart, because I'm gonna use this chart for this fight. We're, we're gonna see how this works. Um, this is from a game, Clash of Monarchs, that I've been playing. And I think it'll work okay. I don't know if, I mean, it'll definitely give me some more varied results than the mechanism I have been using. Um, one thing, you see all these Ds on here. I'm not dealing with routes or demoralizations or anything like that. That'd be adding a lot more rules than I really want to add to this game. Um, I'm really trying to just combine games more than design games. Uh, so I'm just, I'm going to ignore the D results. Those, those relate to... Um, endurance and all this stuff that I don't have even information for. And we're just going to go with strength point loss. So I still will use the card mechanism that the game, uh, this game had. So whatever card I draw is going to add to their thing and then we'll roll on the chart. Alright, so Milky has a 3, that gives him an 8 total. Um, Cowboy drew a 5, that gives him a 9 total. Milky's going to play this card outflanked. He can, I'm ruling he can play this on Cowboy because he has more of these shield sword thing so he's a more military culture and thus is able to benefit from these sorts of tactics. Um, Clash of Empires or Clash of Monarchs, sorry, there's actually tactical chits we could be using but we're not gonna we're not gonna get that far into that game. Um, so that's gonna have uh, cow cowboys ability so that takes him down to five. Uh, nine minus nine divided by two is four point five and we'll round that up. Okay this is gonna be really wonky because this is normally a chart designed for a 1d6 die roll plus a bunch of modifiers. Um, we're not going to have a bunch of modifiers because we're not playing with all these modifiers. So I'm just going to roll 2d6 on it and just go by that. So let's do Milky's roll first. He got an 11. That's pretty big. Um, but that's only going to take away two units. Uh, we're going to have to. We're going to see that you have to have a large army if you want to do a lot of damage. And then cowboy six. So does he do anything at all? He's going to do one unit uh, damage from Melky. All right. So cowboy's being really cool on this turn. He's using yet another card, an overrun. That gives him another another maneuver action. Um, 
I guess he's going to move maneuver this guy out here. So he has a boat way over here. Oh, but then, oh no, it's going to survive because he's got a guy there. And then he's going to move Paradox across the desert to, um, to talk to the Sphinx. The Sphinx has a riddle. Okay, and so they both, Paradox has a green light bulb. Paradox is rather intelligent. The Sphinx has a green light bulb. So if he squeaks, he's okay. Um, so that would be a, let's see, that's a eight. If he rolls an eight, he squeaks and he's okay. And if he gets lower than that, then he passes the challenge. All right, here we go. Five, so he got lower than that. He passed the challenge. Man crawls, then walks, then uses a cane. That's exactly right. So this is gonna go away and then he's gonna get a marker on the labyrinth and that's gonna be worth points to Cowboy. And he gets an item card, a compression rifle. Okay, and we have finished up the turn. Um, this turn, Flush was the only one who progressed. Uh, he's, next turn he should be the leader. Uh, although I guess we're going to be dealing out another another whole hand of cards, so I think we're going to see a big change up on this next turn, which is too bad for him. He's just starting to get the chance to catch up. Um, we'll be able to build boats next turn and then get those boats out and hopefully get some um, civilizations uh, into play. Um, Kat right now is in competition for last place with him however she hasn't moved forward in the glory track for a while um, and I'm not sure if she drew any empires or not I don't recall but the pirate state they're not they're not going to be scoring anytime soon I don't think she's still here on the progress track still unable to make boats she needs to have boats to, to score with the pirates she got rid of the Gauls and so she's going to be in some trouble um, also got rid of her whole cultural buildup I'm I'm not sure how I feel about that that rule. I think um, I might... It's just these, these cards are so potent, I feel like it's a little unfair for them. You know, if you lose an empire that's already a setback, and then you have a greater setback, I don't know. I might um, do a round where both Cat and Little Red get to go through those cards. Or else just change the rule from here on out. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it and, and, and get back to you on a, and another time on that. What else happened? Um, oh, we have a religious leader here. Sir Bodkin the Prudent is the religious, religious leader of the early Finns. He's a, he's a cowardly knight. And it's kind of his deal. Um, and here's his kind of religious leader aspect. Uh, we also had some other religion going on with uh, Rizik the Red. He, well, no, he's not a religious leader, actually. But the Harappans uh, adopted our first world religion, Hinduism, um, which has an elephant on it, interestingly enough. It, you know, it, uh, Hinduism doesn't have a huge effect. It basically says if the empire only gets one point or less, then they get a bonus point. But if they get more than five points, then they get less they they lose a point um so not not going to be a big deal for the harappans they're going to be scoring at least two for the foreseeable future uh but you know getting a new religion or any kind of green green artifact which as you can see here islam there would be gives you an additional point so it's worthwhile to do if you know if it doesn't hurt you um what else is going on we we no longer have nubians on the board um, uh, the, the scoring is, is definitely stretched out a lot. Uh, Milky still was the high score for the round, but, um, Giraffe and Runt both also scored pretty well. Uh, Little Red, the Chow are still get, getting him a, a hearty amount. They pulled in three, not, not a huge, um, Cowboy got a good jump. Again, Cat didn't move and Flush moved one space. Uh, we'll have to see what happens next time on The Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Seven by seven ages, Pope leg.